The Masungi G Reserve is a quick day trip from the capital of Manila, attracting thousands of tourists every year before the pandemic. It's part of the Upper Marikina River Basin Protected Landscape, a sprawling mountainous area of over 26,000 hectares just outside Metro Manila. The reservation was established by the government over 100 years ago. It drains into the Marikina River, which then feeds into the Pasig River, a historic lifeline running through the capital of the Philippines. Masungi is a private institution tasked by the national government with conserving the area. They've taken what used to be a deforested area and turned it into one of the country's most popular geotourism destinations, where tourists hike among limestone cliffs, see rare flora and fauna, and climb floating ropeways. Today, we'll be going around with sisters Ann and Billy Dumaliang. As appointed trustees of Masungi, they lead the efforts to protect the watershed, no matter the danger or threats from those who want to claim the land. Hello! Hello, Ann and Billy. How are you? Nice to see you. So this is the legacy trail. Mm -hmm. We're going up to the reforestation side. Hopefully, we get to see the work we've done so far. Yeah. The watershed's beauty has attracted nature lovers and curious tourists. But it has also attracted land grabbers who illegally develop these areas. Deforestation is a long-standing problem in the Philippines. Under the Marcos dictatorship, commercial logging became a central industry. Across the Philippines, 300,000 hectares were cleared each year during the 1970s and 80s. Now, hundreds of hectares are illegally cleared every year from this watershed alone, a number that has gotten drastically higher since 2015. Less forest cover means more devastating floods and landslides when tropical cyclones hit the Philippines every year. In 2020, the country recorded its worst floods in 45 years. The Legacy Trail shows the progress Masungi is making in restoring the deforested areas. Visitors come here to plant their own trees and walk among its bamboo-lined path. Through the efforts of people like Ann and Billy, the Masungi G Reserve has been able to protect 430 hectares of secondary forests and 2,270 hectares of grasslands from deforestation. We're here in the reforestation areas, one of the first areas that we started to work on back in 2017. So I'm so happy to see them almost already my height <laughs> uh, from, from being this small. Yeah. And what so, kind of tree is this? This is a Nara tree. Nice. Most of the 60,000 trees that we've already planted, I think a lot of them are Nara trees, mm. our national tree. And you see the impact of all the things that you're doing come to life. So that's very rewarding. So tell me about how this all started. I guess it started started all the way back in 1996 mm -hmm. uh, when our dad had a joint venture agreement to do sustainable development in the area. So back then in the 1990s, when we were about six years old, it was just a lot of grasslands and a lot of fields. Mm. Um, lots of happy memories yeah. in our youth were spent here. One uh, vivid memory is just following my dad my dad's footsteps, like literally, um, just going through the mountains and, you know, uncharted territories and just watching him pick up some stones and place them neatly or pick up trash, collecting them along the way. So I feel like 
until now, that's what, what I'm doing as well. We're here at the Mihan, 700 meters above sea level. It has one of the last pine forests in the area. The rest has been cleared due to human activity before Masungi took over. So over here, we have a clear view of the mountain. It may look green, but as you can see, it's lost most of its forest cover. And you can actually see patches of land where some locals have burned down the grasses to make way for agriculture. But the threat is not small-scale agriculture. It's commercial interest. The watershed is a prime target for development activities like real estate and mining. Despite being a protected area, three quarrying companies gained mining agreements covering a total of 1,500 hectares overlapping with Masungi. These quarry operators fence off forest land, cutting the access of the Geo Reserve Foundation and its rangers. Neilbert Marquez is a forest ranger who is at the front lines of these daily dangers. I Laki po ako sa bundok o sa mga linang, mas familiar po sa akin yung gubat o mas mas mapagmahal ako sa kalikasan. Mm -hmm. Pero may mga panganib din ba na kaakibat ang pagiging park ranger? Yes po, naroon po. Dahil una, sa pagbabantay na isang lugar, uh, kailangan nating masiguro yung isang lugar kung ito ba ay hindi napapasok ng mga illegal na gawain kagaya ng pagsusunog. In a highly urbanized country like the Philippines, land is a valuable commodity that companies and powerful individuals try to control for use or investment. In 2016, a group of 40 armed men occupied a portion of the reserve and began taking down Masungi's perimeter fences. When park rangers asked them to leave, they were fired at with machine guns. Just this July, two forest rangers were wounded after being shot in the head and neck during their evening rounds. Conservationists believe the attack is related to the closure of illegal establishments in the protected area. Hindi ba nag-aalala sa yung mga pamilya mo? Sa ngayon po, hindi naman po sila nag-aalala dahil actually, hindi ko po talaga sinasabi yung totoo. I've met up with Ann and Billy again, and we've reached a peak called Nanay, a Filipino word that means mother. It's views like this that attract tourists after a day of hiking. Looking out over the forest from this great height feels like a slice of paradise. The beauty of this natural landscape stands in stark contrast with the dangers faced by those trying to protect it. On Billy's first day on the job in 2016, she was greeted with gunfire. Did you always know that it was going to be <laughs> this tough to just take care of nature? The first Sunday that I, I was supposed to have with Masumi, um, somebody called our house and I heard machine gun fire wow. on, on the phone. So, you know, my first day was tough, but it only became tougher from there. You, you thought it wouldn't get any worse? Yeah, <laughs> I, 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 I thought that it was, it was not the norm. Like it was gonna be a pretty um, unusual thing. Yeah. But that's not true. The more I experience these, the more I get angry, the more I see how complicated everything is mm -hmm. and how big the problem is. And sometimes, of course, I get overwhelmed by these issues. Like, I feel like I can't solve this on my own. But those experiences also compel me to see that 
you know, this is why we exist. This is why Masungi exists. As a designated protected area, no private entity can own or develop land in the watershed. But that doesn't stop people from trying. There have been over 20 encounters with land-grabbing groups since Masungi started their conservation efforts in 1996. They had to defend the reservation from five land-grabbing attempts in 2020 alone. Oh, ano naman gagawin niyo dito sa lupa dito? Ako kalagaan nga itong property ng aming client. Property ng client niyo to? Property ng gobyerno eh, protected area to. In another incident, Ann and Billy had to confront the same group of armed men after they set up an outpost within the reserve. So we're on our way to um, see one of the permanent uh, encampments of a group that uh, Ann and Billy have uh, previously clashed with. Um, they were the same men behind uh, the fencing off of some areas of the nature reserve. We just want to see what they're up to and, you know, maybe we can even talk to them. So there's a, there's like a shed over there, which uh, apparently is being used by the men who are claiming this area. This is like more than a hundred trees cut down. This is crazy. How can they do this? We tried speaking to the people in the camp, but they refused to be interviewed on camera. They said they were there to plant crops, but wouldn't tell us who told them to build there. The sisters believe this is part of a larger plan to claim ownership of the forest area. This wasn't here months ago. Uh, this is probably part of the recent tactic they've been running to occupy and possess the land, yeah. along with burning the area. Really lost for words. Mm. I, I didn't see this until today. One of the companies that Masungi believes is involved in land grabbing is Green Adam and its parent company, Rublu Inc. They claim to be a green company with sustainable energy projects. Its chairman is Luis Otikman, a retired police general recently convicted of graft. While protected land cannot be privately owned, indigenous people may claim it as their ancestral domain. Several Dumagat Remontado tribe members filed a case against Masungi, represented by Rublu's company lawyer. The case was dismissed earlier this year, after the judge ruled that the claimants could not prove that they were legal representatives of the tribe. We scheduled an interview with a lawyer of Green Adam and Rublu to get their side. There is no dispute, actually. Uh, this is a clear misunderstanding. And I, I think that, it, that is a misperception. Rublu has no claim in any portion of the watershed area. Okay. It has claim on the excluded excluded areas from the water reservation. What do you think about the advocacy of Masungi uh, and the efforts to preserve the Upper Marikina watershed in general? It is, it is a very laudable and commendable undertaking. I'm telling you that. It's a good thing. But then again, 
while pursuing something noble and something good, we should not also forget the rule of law. All right. Okay. Am I correct, attorney, in in uh, our research that uh, Rue Blue assisted this group in uh, filing charges against Masumi? The lawyers, I am the lawyer, I'm, it's for free, it's pro bono, mm -hmm. because I've been uh, already attached to them since 2018, I volunteered to help them, mm -hmm. not Rue Blue. Masungi has accused Rublu of deploying armed guards in the area, something the company denies. They insist that it's the indigenous people themselves who are leading the fight against Masungi and paying for armed security. They are not in the forefront. It's, it's the Dumagat who are in the forefront. The Rublu is on just behind them. The armed guards have been uh, recorded on video saying that their employer is Rublu. What can you say about that? Because yun kasi pinaninindrap namin yung rublo kasi hindi nila kinakatakutan yung dumagat. Kasi ka, kung mag-namedrap na kayo kasi mas nakakatakot yung general kesa, kesa kayo. So that was my mistake na sinabihan ko yung guardia na sabihin yun. But then again, that is not that, that, that follow that it is the truth. The Philippines has a long history of violence against environmental defenders and is one of the deadliest places worldwide for conservationists. In 2019, 43 land and environmental defenders were killed in the Philippines, according to rights group Global Witness. Always the same pattern, a beautiful place and the tragedy behind it. As the problems of land grabbing, illegal logging, and destructive mining persist, the government also faces accusations of not doing enough to protect the country's remaining forests. The Department of Environment and Natural Resources acknowledges these dangers. Undersecretary Jonas Leones says government employees face daily threats to their personal safety as well. I want to talk specifically about uh, Rublu Incorporated and uh, Green Atom. Ano po ba ang position ng DENR doon? Have you studied? Ang problema na ang mga ang ano namin doon na several times tinanggalan natin yung mga fence na ginawa nila doon eh. Kaya lang nag-uulit-ulit. Kaya nga gagawin namin na uh, kaya nga minsan nagpapadala na kami ng ano doon ng uh, mga uh, enforcer para maprotect na kasi ano rin, yung mga heavily armed din yung nandun din. At uh, ang pagkakalam ko dyan Atom itong uh, companies na ito they're also relying on the right of the indigenous people. It, it appears that uh, we allow the private sector to lead the way in protecting these very important areas. Um, is that model sustainable? Shouldn't the public sector, shouldn't the government be doing the job, for example, that is that Masungi is doing it? Alam mo, napakahirap sa amin, sa, lalo na sa DNR. No? Uh, so we cannot do it alone. Napaka-limited na aming resources, napaka-limited na aming manpower. So we need the support of everybody. Because uh, environmental concern is not the concern of one agency, but the concern of everybody. There's one group we haven't heard from. We've heard a lot about ancestral land and companies claiming to represent indigenous people. It's time we listen to the people who are rooted in this land. So we're on our way to meet some of the members of the Dumaga tribe. Uh, these are people who have lived here for generations and have recognized rights over the watershed. Hi. Salamat po sa oras ninyo, ha? Eleanor Verana Tencho is one of the leaders of the community. Actually, ang tingin po namin dito sa aming lugar ay isang paraiso. Bakit? Dahil napakayaman sa tubig. Hmm. Uh, ang mga tao dito ay hindi nagbabayad ng uh, bill para sa patubig. So alam namin na mahalaga mapangalagaan namin yung aming water system dito sa taas para mapanatili namin malinis yung dumadaloy na tubig dito sa aming ano, barangay. So, 
meron pong mga pribadong individual at mm-hmm. mga kumpanya, mga mm-hmm. korporasyon na nagsasabing meron silang karapatan sa lupa dito. Yung iba nga, binabakuran pa, linalagyan ng mga barbed wire. Mm-hmm. Bilang katutubo, ano po yung tingin nyo dun? Para sa amin, masakit yun kasi uh, kami ng mga katutubo, hindi kami naglalagay ng bakod kasi ang alam namin, ang lupaing nuno ay para sa lahat. Hindi naman po kami against doon sa mga development. Ang sa amin ay naaayon lamang kung paano mapapangalagaan yung kalikasan. In 2016, when Anne started the Musungiji Reserve brand and opening the trails to limited visits, I knew it was going to be big. I knew that there were going to be lots of challenges. So again, I, I knew that I needed to join and I needed to support that goal and to, that mission. Nasungi has grown to be such an intimate part of our lives. I go as far as saying it's my younger brother. So just imagine leaving your younger brother vulnerable. It kills me. I always say this, it's the regret of my lifetime if I don't do anything to save it. I think it's our calling. So we will always be working on conservation. I've come to see Masungi beyond its famed attractions. Through the stories of environmental defenders like Anne and Billy, their work spans generations and involves huge risks. The dangers that rangers face, the community work of advocates, these add up and take root. Filipino conservationists are not naive to the danger. They work in spite of the danger because they understand that the alternative is a risk they cannot take. While there's a history of violence, there's also a history of courage, of hope that in spite of it all, something worthwhile will grow. <laughs>